What's up, guys? Welcome to Movie Schmovie. Hey. Episode two, two, two. Seems like we should have done something two-themed yeah. for this, but we didn't. Like, we could have talked about our favorite part twos. <laughs> Terminator 2, of course. Yes. Yeah, that's the truth. The best. You know, I still need to watch that. Yeah. That, 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 John? This is things that keep me up at night sometimes. No, I'll see it, but I'm like, that's the one that John still has never seen. Do you seen. ever, though, think of something that you're glad you have to experience? Like, you look forward to putting it on one yeah, day? Yeah, sure. You know, I felt I, like that was my... Evil Dead was that for me. When mm-hmm. you guys... Like, oh, Evil Dead. I was like, I never saw that movie. I saw it and I was like, okay, this makes sense. I love this movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, but who are you? I'm Ron. I'm John. Steve. What's this What's this episode about? I think this episode is a little bit of a catch yeah. up. It's been a while since we've talked that about That seems to be the pattern, you know? Yes. I like we, that. we go away for a few weeks, we, we like bank it. these, we come back, and it's like, a, hey, the first one, what you see, yeah. what you like, what you, what you didn't like, <laughs> it's what you get. Mm. It's like a current events <laughs> yeah, yeah. review. But if you've seen something old recently, like if I had seen Terminator 2, would be perfect. Yeah, that would be a would fine be topic of conversation. <laughs> right? It topic. would have been perfect, John. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Maybe uh, when uh, but he didn't. Alita Battle Angel comes out? Is that <laughs> it? Is it, is it yeah. yeah. What? We can watch That's... Terminator 2 instead right, right, right. for our James Cameron fix. Okay. But, because he did produce that, right? I'm not He sure. did. Okay. That's all I remember. I have the screenwriting that. credit too. I think. <laughs> I feel like every time his name comes up, it's just, wow, wow. <laughs> I, I genuinely feel that He's way. Like guy. I, I don't, I don't like, I don't. I what? totally respect him and like yeah. I, I love yeah. many oh, of yeah. his films. And like he's definitely on a tier that I right. can like look up to and be like, yes. But I would say in the last few years, honestly, since like Avatar, yeah. Because I mean, like I have a feeling of I have feelings about Avatar, uh, that. I just yeah, there's like a mention of him, and I just immediately either tune out or don't care, or um, I don't know. There's like a relevance because I feel like it's literally like all or not. It's it's all Avatar or nothing. Yeah, it's it's what it's happened Strange. since like you know you make another movie that becomes the biggest movie ever when you already had the biggest movie ever, mm-hmm. and then immediately you're just like obviously I need more yeah. of those movies. Like I need seven of them or six of them or however many yeah. he's, like he's the, supposed to be making. And he's like the Kanye of like movies. Yeah, movies. yeah he's got he's comments. Like, he has like hot takes. That he's got his takes. So terrible. Yeah. He never goes like, women need to be in directorial positions. He's always like, this movie's trash. Yeah. He's always, never any yeah. good hot takes. No, it's always weird to me when someone comes out with their hot takes, if every time you open your mouth, it's something like that. It starts to make you seem out of touch. How is it that he's become kind of a joke while making these giant movies? Isn't it? Is it the ego that now just seems so? It's it's, it's that's a huge yeah. part of the equation for sure. Yeah, it's the ego. It, it is the fact that like you know he has pretty much always put out pretty successful films. Yeah, whether critically or commercially, usually both. Um, but. Yeah, some degree of critical respect yeah, for all of his yeah, movies. Yeah, for for most, if not all. And but it, but then it becomes something where like, yeah, I feel like the ego is like <clears throat> buying into the light, the, the yeah. last great thing you did, and that's you know for him it's like this Avatar world. Yeah, the Avatar shit is so weird to me. Like I don't. It is. That's a whole. We should do like a whole podcast on Avatar. We should. <laughs> if you told me, I, t- I would love to. If you told me ten years ago, Stephen John, that. James Cameron would be the well, joke about to of call the him industry. Steve Cameron. I would call him Steve Cameron. <laughs> I James you. Cameron is the butt I th- of I was going to say, he reminds me of Steve Jobs in a lot of ways, so maybe that's no. what you would be thinking. <laughs> if, it's that ego with that sort of oh, unchecked, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. like a guy who's sort of right, he hits but, the lot. Okay, if you told me 10 years ago that James Cameron would be the butt of everybody's jokes in M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> would, would be making incredible movies for a micro-budget. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I would have fucking laughed you, you smacked out. me I would have yeah. smacked your face and then laughed at me <laughs> and then came back and you would have said me. I will never start a movie podcast with <laughs> yeah. you that is ridiculous <laughs> how dare you no I would That's say true, that if man. you told me that long ago that he would not have made another movie since oh, then and true. would still be prepping the next Avatar movie it's yeah. almost like as you said, Steve, there's this memory for the success of Avatar but I also feel like in the interim this franchise fever has happened <clears throat> with mm-hmm. you know bringing back Star oh, Wars yeah. and all the Marvel the IP, movies and the DC yeah. movies, and I th- almost I almost feel like he's bringing Avatar back at a time where people are starting to say, 
we like it better when these movies feel more unique. Yeah, like we've yeah. been through the Marvel experiment and we've seen Infinity War, and by this you know this time next year we will have seen the the end of that. And I I think even Marvel is purportedly stepping away from the the interconnected stuff to do more standalone stories. So it's kind of funny to think that he's going to be like, here's the first of four (laughs) new Avatar films. Can't can't wait. At a moment when people might be saying, oh, right now we're really hooked on something new. Because I saw Avatar recently. And it was, you know, fine. It's fine. It was serviceable. Like the effects are, are pretty were pretty impressive yeah, for was, the time. Yeah, yeah. And I do remember thinking, you know, uh, people riding around on dragons fighting helicopters was kind of a cool image to mm-hmm. see. But it's weird that it's such a generic story in some ways. Everybody shouldn't reply every time Avatar comes out. Oh, Pocahontas with aliens. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> says that. It's crazy. It's like They should instead say universe. Fern Gully. <laughs> Fern Gully, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. It's the two of them just yeah. their love child. Mushed it together. Yeah. Fern Cahontas. I like that. So yeah, when Alita comes out, we'll watch Terminator 2. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's circle back. <laughs> to close the loop on that, um, what has anybody seen recently that they find uh, Oh, John, noteworthy? so many movies. I know, you've seen quite a few, I've, haven't I've, you? I've gotten my groove back, much like Stella did. <laughs> I figured, I um, figured. Found it, finding ways, man, just to making it happen. Yeah. I'm uh, proud of you, man. Trying to get my last great e- efforts in with Movie Pass. <laughs> Movie Pass has not worked out for me once I'm in so the last sorry, couple man. months. Every time they have a screening that I want to go to listed, by the time I'm getting ready to go, it's no longer listed. Like it'll be listed in the first part of the day, and it won't be. <laughs> later. Are any movies listed at all? Uh, well, the Harbor East. Oh yeah, there's so no ticketing. The, but even not even every screening there. Mm. Um, and then over the weekend, even the movies that I noticed during the week were were available were just blocked out completely. Like yeah, because they're, so they're, they're considered premium screenings yeah. over the weekend. So it's just a mess. I was in Intercourse, Pennsylvania, and uh, I noticed that all of the movies were available, but also it was Intercourse, Pennsylvania. Mm. So that just meant that, like, people, that was all they had. It's, yeah. it's like movies and intercourse. Amish market, intercourse, in intercourse. So, mm. like, that was it, was, it was an interesting. I wonder if anybody goes to Intercourse, Pennsylvania and doesn't make a joke about having sex there. They have to. You have to. It, what's nuts about it is, it's I think like, it's like when you cross the line, yeah. like where the sign is. It's, it's like eighty percent like, Amish. Like, yeah, get your, your body. Free. <laughs> <Right>. <clears throat> it's interesting, man. But um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've like been figuring out how to make it a movie yeah. pass work. Mm-hmm. Um, it just hasn't worked out with my times. My times right. were were the late showings, and those are yeah. almost completely gone. Like it seems they, they, like they, they don't would have that would be a thing. But at nine o'clock, it will say there's an eleven twenty. At so what, 10, you, what you gotta try to do if you gone. can, you gotta go there and buy that ticket. Early. I know, I thought about it. Like, I've done it. I've gone and it's been like, oh, it's in the app. Movie theaters five minutes from my house. Yeah. Yeah. I will go buy that yeah. ticket and then go back later that night. Mm. You know what I mean? Like whatever. If or if, go buy a ticket for another movie. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Give if, the money to somebody else. If my nearest theater were uh, an AMC instead of a Cinemark, I would have that A list stubs business. Oh, no doubt. Kicking them already. And just, mine is. Uh, I mean, it's just like a weird. I'm in this weird thing where like I still go to a, the screenings enough that like I see some for free. Yeah, I don't do nearly as many as I used to. Um, so it might become something beneficial to me where I will just switch mm-hmm. to the the, the stubs thing because I mean that that shit's like a no brainer. Yeah, like you're saying, like it, and it is my neighborhood theater. Like right. it's five minutes from my house, mm. and it's one that just got renovated and it's gorgeous and it's got the killer seats and a new snack bar. And I just everything. wish it included like the the senator and the Charles. Like I I wish that there was some way to get a service that did that. That's because right. that what was, about cin- cinemi- cinemi- I'm looking uh, into that. Yeah. yeah, I've 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 talked to a couple friends that have that. Um, locally but even like in other states and that yeah. seems to be the best option if you want that kind of mm-hmm. if you want those theaters right. right the more of the independent theaters and like the mom pop theaters that aren't like chains yeah but i mean you know i've talked to so many people recently who have switched to that amc's a plus mm-hmm. thing and like they love it you love i it? mean like advanced purchases everything every time every movie like it's like when you go from the problem to like the perfection, it's like it's like it literally is night and day for, yeah. for the user experience. Right. I just haven't gone there just because I paid for the year, so I'm gonna see what I can do for the year. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I've seen a lot of movies. Well, yeah. I, I feel like I've seen a lot of movies, whether in theater or finally catching up on some that have come out on video on demand or like mm-hmm. iTunes mm-hmm. or whatever. Things I missed earlier in the summer have come out recently that I finally got to see. So yeah, I saw a lot of movies. What about you guys? I've seen you a lot. So decent amount. I'm 
Uh, I don't think I saw nearly as many as you, but I I did see some. Um, one that blew my mind and scared me for the rest of my life. But um, yeah, I, you saw I, Mamma Mia too. I, I did. I did see. Talking about IP, mm-hmm. man. They have a franchise there. <laughs> yeah, they do. The movie has made so much money. People, it's like $120, hundred and twenty, thirty million dollars. And I've never heard someone slander it that saw it. <laughs> it's always like, man, that movie's I, I, so good. I, yeah, I mean, like I'm not a fan of it. Well, at no, all. I don't think anybody involved thinks it's yeah. more than what it is. Exactly. Right. And so anybody going to see it, it's yeah. service level experience, catchy songs, yeah. gorgeous, you know, scenery, yeah. Greek islands or wherever it happens. I like stuff like that. That sort of seems like, oh, this is for people who aren't aren't too cool to go to the theater just to enjoy this kind of like campy or kitschy sort of experience, campy, you know, yeah. <laughs> but campy beyond campy. So back to my woes yeah, going to movie, see movies. Movie I've actually has... paid full price for a few tickets recently. So okay. yeah, I saw, I saw a couple things. I don't know if anybody seen black Klansman. I, did. I have not seen anybody seen happy time murders. Yes. Anybody seen the direct to video on demand, uh, Danny McBride, of course, movie, Arizona. Of yes. course. <laughs> Well, we all saw that. Yes. Wow. Should, should we okay. talk about Arizona then? Let's, yeah, yeah give, give us some time. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you guys Maybe think? Maybe it's a little time. I I didn't dislike it. I thought it was kind <laughs> of a... It, I enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. I loved the sort of setup of it. Yeah. And I thought the first half hour or so... It started to get nuts. ...was really... Like, it had a style and a weird kind of nervous oh, tension yeah, yeah. to it that I think became more familiar. It just became, yeah. as it went along, it became something I feel like I've seen a few times before. Um, but no, I thought the kind of, I thought the mean spiritedness of the comedy, especially in the first half hour or so, was really pretty sharp and felt like it had this momentum to it. And then, do you know what I mean? It got to the midpoint and it was just kind of like going, like it was a little bit more paint by numbers. Once, you, oh, once yeah, it becomes, yeah. okay, you have a villain and you have, you have people that are trying to escape this villain. It was yeah. like that in that stuff. It was, yeah. it didn't seem quite as cleverly constructed as yeah. it did in the beginning. It did something really shitty with like distance and time. And I was like, what, why is this taking so long after it escalated? And there was like the, the guy trying to, the cop trying to figure out where they were. It started right. to get really boring at that part. If it didn't feel as frantic, yeah. it didn't feel as escalated. I think it just like escalated. It almost like it escalated too quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it kind of, it, like the 30 minute mark is like where it kind of slowed down, like where it just becomes the same thing over and over. Right. Like where it gets kind of a little, maybe crazier and crazier in some ways, where more and more people are being pulled in to try to help and then mm. failing and help and right. failing. And yeah. where ultimately, you know, you're still left with the real conflict between the two leads. But it did seem like it got really going quick. Mm-hmm. And and that was kind of cool. Like I, I, I liked how kind of bonkers it went in that first half an hour and like you're immediately into this conflict but yeah i don't know it's just kind of puttered out for me it kind of lost steam and like those kinds of films like where it's kind of got this like horrific comedy stuff going on and Mm -hmm. that works sometimes and doesn't work others it's like it's got to have something else happening besides that right where the stuff like with the daughter and like the ex-husband and like you know Nothing of none of that really worked for me. Like yeah. any of the stuff with her getting her daughter involved, or like what her daughter did for the story at all. Yeah. I don't know. Like yeah, the daughter was there pretty much just to be a sort of point of vulnerability of Rosemary Dewitt's right, character. Right. We should say a little bit about what this movie is. I just realized people might not know what the movie's about, yeah. but it's a it's kind of centered in the 2009 housing crash. Crisis, yeah. Um, and it's. It's about there's a dead subdivision, and we're meant to believe these houses never sold, or people have moved out. Or there's there's have, many of these divisions. These, these, yeah. They've, they've yeah. been foreclosed on, and so it's a lot of empty, boarded up houses. And we we see that some people are suicidal, and other people are just at the yeah. edge of it. Um, and it's this, so it's this kind of almost post apocalyptic neighborhood. And Rosemary Dewitt plays a real estate agent who lives there and is trying to sell homes there. And at her realty office one day, she witnesses Danny McBride's character murder somebody. And he is an irate homeowner in the subdivision. And, and it just escalates from there. She, you know, yeah. she sees what he did. He to, takes her hostage and then you're off to the races. Yeah. And you're right. All that does happen very quickly. And it was very, like there was an edginess and a danger yeah. to that. And yeah. seeing Danny McBride embrace, seeing him play a character who is fully fulfilling that sort of unhinged quality that he can bring to a, a more purely comedic performance. You know, it was just a few degrees more antisocial and and psychopathic than some of his characters on shows yeah. like Vice yeah. Principals or 
whatever. Eastbound, so, yeah. So it's yeah, Eastbound and Down. So it's interesting to see him play that. And if anything, this movie existed just for me to say, oh, I can see why Danny McBride would do this. I could see yeah. why it would be fun to take your comic role that you play and take it to this ugly level Turn because throughout what gave that character weight was the Danny McBrideness of it like his little asides and when he would cut through the tension yeah. that stuff almost kept me going through the movie yeah. but there was a point where it Absolutely. was just it was like spiraled out of control and kind of petered out at the same time it just maybe didn't have anywhere to go I think uh, definitely it didn't have it, yeah somebody went to a meeting at a studio and pitched the first 30 minutes <laughs> that's what it was it, I mean it, or, they, it was, or they just said what John said like take 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 Kenny Powers, yeah, and he bought a house in two thousand six, and yeah. or seven, and then it, it, and when the bubble burst, yeah. yeah, and he's real fucking pissed, yeah, and he's and he's gone over the edge, like that's, it could have been movie. so good though. It it had all the yeah, elements that could have made really, it really good. Nice cast, yeah. I mean, oh great cast, weird like pop up cameos, like just for a couple scenes, you see somebody yeah. and like oh wow, um, and in fact some oh, of that yeah. became I didn't weird hate it, though. There's, there's like that. There's that idea of setting up characters that you think are supposed to be helpful and they turn out not to be. Yeah. And this movie did it just enough times that it no longer had any real surprise to right. it. Yeah. And there's right. one particular moment that I think is supposed to be a big shock that is sort of like set up throughout the movie. Oh, when this person comes, they're going to help, and it doesn't pan out that right. way. And it would have been, it would have been more surprising at that point if that person had been able to help. Totally. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. But yeah, f- I mean, if you if you know the kind of movie we're talking about, it's a dark comedy. It's bloody. It's mean spirited. It's got Caitlin Olsen, David Allen Greer, Danny McBride, uh, Rosemary DeWitt. But I mean, those comedic actors in particular doing some you know stuff that if you like them, you'll probably Luke Wilson. Yeah, Luke Wilson said it. This is one of those movies, and I'm like, why the fuck wasn't this like pushed more? And then no, I this, see why. this definitely this is definitely on the. Yeah, this is a movie you can like. I can see that yeah. this didn't get a distribution. No, this is a huge genre of movies oh, or yeah. category of movies. It's Ronald, becoming the a big thing where you see the stars and you go, "Oh wow, <laughs> this is that? a little gem." You're right, and then you see it and you go, "Yeah." So you said you saw Black Klansman, right, Steve? I did yeah. What do you think in general about Spike Lee's recent career, and how do you feel like this movie fits in with it? What what, what did it, what did you? I, I didn't see what was the one he had just come out like a year and a half ago. Uh, uh Chirac. Chirac, yeah. Oh, Did not see that. Don't. But I heard like yeah, like I heard like mixed stuff. That's a weird one, man. Yeah. Um I feel like this is one of his more like most accessible films. Um like this, uh maybe like Inside Man comes to mind, like mm-hmm. audience for the topic and the subject matter considered, like I feel like it's pretty accessible, like an audience film in in, in some ways. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um but uh yeah, so I don't know. Like I feel like compared to some of I didn't see again Shyrock, but the more recent movies besides Inside Man, I feel like were a little more um felt a little more niche, like a little more uh I don't know the right word, like statements, you know, like where I can see an audience not embracing some of the topics in the film. Right. Um, but they weren't reaching maybe for as much of a, a mainstream audience exactly. as this movie yeah, was. Yeah, and this does, I feel like. And I mean, even again, like as crazy as the story is and like what it's based on and the characters and what some of the characters say and do in the film, like I feel like the audience even that I saw it with in the middle of the day, like we're pretty into the movie. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's very much like a, it talks to the audience and involves an audience and like there's reactions to things in the movie that are audible and things like that. But um it was I, funny I mean, and I thought it was good. Yeah. I mean I, I don't I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. I mean I, I really did like it quite a bit. Um and the weirdest thing for me, and I don't know if I'm just like in this weird mindset about him, but but uh the lead, uh Denzel's son, mm-hmm. what's his name? Uh, uh John David or John yeah, David Washington. Something like that. I I I had the most I feel like issue with him. Like I don't know that I like loved him in the movie. Yeah, he had a kind of reserved quality that I think was part of the character. But as the movie wore on, I began to wonder how much of that was the character and how much of that was just that guy's right. acting style. Right, because right. they 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 make a point in the movie, and in his words, that he can speak jive talk, but also speak you know polite English or whatever. Right. And I couldn't tell if that was supposed to be a gag because I didn't think his quote-unquote white voice was really substantially different from his regular 
speaking voice yeah, throughout yeah, the movie. Totally. And to the point where when he goes to that rally, there's a scene where he goes to a political rally and he's talking to a young woman there and they're like, you know, hitting it off and he's kind of flirting with her and he's like calling her like, hey, soul sister. Yeah. It's like he sounded so stiff mm. that I was thinking, is this <clears throat> is this just this guy's acting that right. well, he's hitting the limits of it? Or is there a subtle joke that Spike Lee is making of just this guy's not so self-aware. He doesn't actually, right, right, right. Conv- he's not convincingly <laughs> fitting in you know anywhere uh which would be kind of a funny thing to have compared to say adam driver who i thought was great in this adam driver and topher grace yeah yeah so fucking good yeah like scary good is david duke like there's actually a big laugh in the movie that he gets just with like a gesture that's very late in the movie but he just kind of has like a a moment where he kind of realizes something um and it was like, it played as such a big laugh. And I was thinking, that's almost risky to say that you could have an actor like him playing that role because it could, it could make, it could take away from the depth. Yeah. But I thought, no, I thought it has me thinking like, why isn't Topher Grace in more, more roles yeah. now? Because he's almost always doing something interesting. Yeah. I like Topher Grace. Yeah. He referenced like some video that he watched. I think, I, I think it's maybe a speech that he makes towards the end of the movie, but like he referenced like watching a video of the actual thing. And yeah. if you like, and I think like they linked to it after the video was mm-hmm. over. Um, it might have been in Seth Meyers. That's who he was on. And like, I watched that video, and like, it's uncanny. Like, it mm-hmm. is, it is scary close. Like, how a character like that can play to like right. the audience and be like charming, right? And like, it's gross, but it's like, but he's. I think he's the perfect, or ha- is the perfect choice to play that guy. Swap out for the main character. Hold on, let me. Let me. Okay, go. Sterling K. Brown. I knew you were fucking going to say that. <laughs> because he has comedic... But who? But who, but who, what movie would he not improve if you swapped him into any lead role? He might be... I mean, like, him delivering Shane Black lines in the new Predator trailer? Yeah. 100% See, I wonder got if he would more be interested too, in the if movie. If he would be too authoritative. I don't know if I could buy him as a rookie. I mean, that's You don't one think qu- he could play? I just don't... Th- I think this guy, the one thing that John David, that one John David Washington does have mm. is he yeah. brings to it this kind of, like untested That's young true. guy kind of it's quality true. that I don't think Sterling K. Brown would have brought. But could I, could he play the shit out of it? Probably so. I, I'm just saying... I, I counter that with his This Is Us mental breakdowns. Okay, see, I didn't watch that show yet. His his This Is yeah. Us mental breakdowns where he's like doubting himself mm-hmm. and he's, oh, I don't think I could do it. He's so fucking good. I just yeah. don't know if he's I, I young enough. Saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's one of those things where I would be weird seeing it... Um, with a different actor but I yeah I had the same thought Steve of just wondering is John David Washington is he doing something very mannered or is he just kind of a restrained actor and this role might have needed more fireworks for me I mean, or something he's not like bad it. but it's, no it's he, not bad it's not, not bad. bad in the movie like no, he, he's fine but I feel like the story is so interesting and yeah. like and like John said Adam Driver is really really good yeah. and I was really blown away by Topher yeah. Grace as well um, that I just I feel like just in comparison I felt yeah. like I was kind of a little more um, aware of like choices being made mm-hmm. that seem like like John said like was that a character choice or is that like a limitation of, of yeah. his? Um, but like but the last like ten minutes of the movie I thought were just like phenomenal. It's interesting how much you can sort of decide you want Spike to be that on the nose with yeah. stuff because the movie really does bring in current events. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love Spike Lee, but I think the fact that he doesn't try to be subtle sometimes is so clearly not an accident you know so anybody yeah, who wants yeah. to say he's heavy handed it's like yeah it's in the yeah. face with a hammer if he, because that's what he's trying to he's do trying to say it, yeah. um, I think this movie did walk the line between a very message based movie and a movie that if the conventional version of this movie would be sort of a rousing entertainment it, it managed to kind of with a cohesion of style that you don't always see in Spike Lee's movies. As much mm-hmm. as I'm impressed by his ideas, his ideas, and I always like just him working. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he can sometimes seem a little loosey goosey with the production values or some aspect of the movies. That this movie, I feel that maybe having Jordan Peele behind it, maybe having right. Blumhouse involved, yeah. Yeah. like there was an effort to say, and which I always love it is when somebody who's in a position to say, "All right, let's get some money to this guy, or let's get some production value, or some kind of." something structure for this guy who normally has to scrabble and 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 rub yeah. nickels together which is always surprising to me to hear that someone like Spike Lee has a hard time getting the budget for his movies but he right. does well, so i feel like Jordan Peele his influence i don't think you can uh, you can take it away that he, yeah. his name probably helped get this movie made at a certain level uh, spike lee uh, in the last couple of years is kind of uh he's incredible to me but i think that making his his work a little more 
palatable to everybody. Polished or something? Yeah, I well, know. I mean, uh, she's got to have it was the last thing he did that I've seen. Oh, see, I haven't um, seen that show. She's got to have it the TV series. The series, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. And, and one of the things that had what changed... What if you meant the movie? I'd be right. like, Ronald, he's made a lot. <laughs> right. Uh, one <laughs> you of the really should check out some right. of his more recent work. One of the things that's changed in the last couple of decades is uh, the tone of that original story and, and kind of the, impl- the implication that, like, someone being sexually free... It somehow like should be uh, kind of used as like a worst case scenario mm-hmm. is has been has changed right. So yeah. what he did was he hired almost all all women writers. Mm-hmm. He did hire all women writers for the TV show, which lent a, a different voice to a, a, a modernization of a story. And I think it's something cool about him embracing people helping him sure and that's something i don't know if he felt like he could have done before but mm-hmm. because people are so like you have to do it like this it has to go through the filter of the studio and now that there's so many places where you can release things and they want him to be Spike Lee, he may feel a little more free to get some help get some polish on yeah. something and i think it's it's kind of incredible that he's still relevant it's cra- it's kind of crazy no man. there's some moments in this movie where the filmmaking is just so like energetic and yeah. that way that he can shoot stuff and the way that he can stage things and it's just there's there's an energy and a life to it that is purely Spike Lee and yeah. I I you know I like some of his movies a lot and I love a couple of them and then mm. there've been a few I've seen where I've thought this is interesting but it just didn't cohere yeah, yeah. for me as a movie I and this so. is definitely one of those as you were saying Steve that more accessible now I I wonder how much of the story is true I've heard very little of the, what happens in this movie is actually based on the truth yeah I was reading that like thread with Boots Riley is like yeah, yeah. oh Boots Riley is a fucking historian movie. Yeah, well, have you seen that? Like, what I'm no, talking about? I've heard like, about he, it. Well, like, I mean, he, tearing the movie well, he was apart. It, he was yeah. basically saying, "Why did you make another movie that kind of glorifies the role of the cops in yeah. this situation, acting right. like the cops were the best agents of social change in this way?" Right. I would hope that the things that make the story really interesting were not all fabricated for the movie. But I don't know the facts of it. I don't know if anyone does. Did you say you you read something, Steve? Or no? I just was like kind of going through that thread. Of, yeah, like yeah, I've heard about like, it. <clears throat> like just certain scenes, like at some of the rallies, and like where like where he first like infiltrated Mm -hmm. like that that historically like were different situations like that he was never president some of the things he was president in the film oh and um i don't know like i don't i i I don't know enough about it to really state it but i mean i I was definitely following some of those threads that he was getting into it with people on twitter um but i admire like him calling that shit out if that's the if that's a fact i mean right like you said, I can kind of get this like line you're trying to walk about, like pulling story threads that like actually happened and putting something else on screen that like the average person is going to now take as a fact, right? Mm-hmm. Or or you're highlighting something that was like the one piece that was like maybe true mm-hmm. because it's like the most palatable, mm-hmm. you know, to to watch or the most you know like rah rah, you know, like yeah, you yeah. know, feeling walking out of a theater so that you know people will quote unquote like your movie if it's supposed to be true then that's part of what makes it interesting is you mean this happened right that's why those movies that play with that that say no this actually happened you know throwing it up on screen they know that we're used to going to see a movie that says based yeah. on a true story where at some point you go there's no way the this idea is that true. like pain and gain might be more historically accurate than right the black, black clans makes me feel fucking crazy because I read that, that article. Michael, that Michael Bay made a movie that maybe factually more accurate <laughs> yeah. than a Spike Lee film. That makes my fucking I didn't, brain I didn't go make crazy. You cry. <laughs> but my... to, to pivot real quick on the based on the true story, how they throw it up. Mm-hmm. One other film that I saw that I fucking loved was American Animals. Oh yeah, I finally saw that. Have you seen that one, Ronald? No. And you yeah. were like pumping it up to me. Yeah. And like uh, loved it. Yeah. Oh my god! I was just thinking of it just now when we were saying movies that play around with the truth because that movie tried very very hard to to depict the truth and then while it was doing that showing you Question, that there yeah. can uh, be no real there's no real truth you can get from any one person's so account you know I gotta check it out I, yeah. I mean it's it's queued up for me to watch I right. gotta I gotta check it out I just love the cast right. um, was it Barry Keog and mm-hmm. uh, Evan Peters mm-hmm. incredible um, I is love... that how we say Barry's last name is it Keog oh Keog no I, I don't I, know I, Kyo, Kyo, because that you know O U G H or O G H or what like that that combination can be like F. Can I feel be... like I, I watched an interview with um, the director like Bart, or Bart something, something. <laughs> and I feel like 
I feel like somebody said it that yeah. that way. But oh, okay. Anyway. No, I, I'm not correcting you. I'm really yeah, wondering. Yeah, I have no clue. Um, I just say Barry K. I'm sure he I call him. That. I call him BK Broiler. Yeah. <laughs> BK Brawler. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I, I I just thought the performances were great. Like I loved the unique um, attempt to tell uh, a fact based story that, like you said, is um, questioning what pieces of itself are, are true. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it's so weird. Like you either go with it or you don't like having this like mashup of a documentary with a feature film version of a story right? with the actual people in the story mm -hmm. that it's based on. I like, I was so into this movie guys. Like mm. I was like, I was like biting my nails, not literally, but like that kind of on your seat, edge of your seat kind of feeling. Yeah. Because you know, I you, you go and you're like, you know, something went wrong. You know, something's not going to end up well for these. Yeah, guys. this can't be the story yeah. of however everything yeah. went great. When, when they're telling the stories and they're all separated and they have different backgrounds and you can tell the tone of their story as they're mm -hmm. depicting it and stating it, like you can tell something goes wrong, but even still, you're just waiting to see what happens. And mm -hmm. the characters, like the performances of these real person of the real people that it's based on are just so layered and like specifically Peters and Barry Kay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I just think their performances were incredible, especially Peters. Yeah. I mean, I think Evan Peters is like a star in, in, in waiting. Like he's like the Ryan Murphy guy in all the TV series that he does. And he's super involved and he was great as Quicksilver. I thought in the X-Men movie, Yeah, but the, he, the, he's got something. And like, I, I think it's a matter of time before he mm -hmm. like, whether this is the role that gets him noticed and then something next is going to make him break. Yeah. He is like, he's, a star. He's really he's good. He's so good he's in the, this movie. Um, he's becoming that guy that you could sort of mentally plug into things and go, oh, he, he yeah. would do a good job with that. You know, oh, that he would, because oh, yeah, he right. always kind of brings some, I mean, not to say that this is the trait of all great acting, but he does something memorable that is almost like, like not quite scenery chewing, but he, he does, he, there's an energy and some, like, if you're acting opposite him, you have to be doing something interesting for him not to just eat you up, you know, on the Yeah, screen. yeah. He's like electric. Like yeah. he just he his just voices kinda... are really good too. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of really good voice work. I'm I i do not know yeah. if you've noticed the differences in his voices between the roles. Mm. They're like crazy, man. Like he he is a different person every single movie. Yeah. Every single thing he does. It's weird. I just saw something on Twitter coming in here tonight that apparently the director is like there's some conversations about his name being out there for the Bond, the next Bond movie. Oh wow! Oh. Which is fucking crazy. That is crazy. Um, I don't know how much truth there is to it, but there's is a it blogger American? that I follow. Is it American? I don't know. Director? I don't think he's American. I think he's maybe British. Yeah, I don't know. Bart something. He did the mm -hmm. Imposter. That, that, that doc. Remember that documentary, The Imposter. Yes, he did that. I love that. So this <laughs> movie has like a nice. It, there's like an interesting angle to the film where like part of it's like documentary interview style oh. of the actual guys. That did this heist, and it what? is so. It, it's so. I think that it works really cool. so well. I'm super right, into this movie. Out. Well, you know the way the imposter played around with the story to the to the extent that it could preserve a couple of big twists. Mm -hmm. This movie does a, a much smaller version yeah. of that twist, but there's a point late in the film where you have kind of an oh, and now I understand this a little bit more. I understand where assumptions were made. You still have some deviation in the different right. accounts, you yeah. know. Um, that's really cool but you are put in the minds of these guys mm. and you do sort of think what would happen if you try if the three of us right now tried to plan some theft <laughs> you know it's a little bit like that uh, because you think we would think of a lot we would right. cover a lot of bases but there's certain things we would never think of wow. yeah. and the yeah. big thing that this movie made me think about that I was just like oh man this is this is crazy is how you liquidate the asset so yeah, you, yeah let's say you've yeah. you've got the you jewel yeah. you've got the rare item you've got the whatever it's like how do you then turn that into money right when you're in a world of things that are heavily documented you yeah. know and everybody's looking for this thing it's just crazy so crazy. so it's a yeah as steve has said it's, it really kind of sticks with you the more you bringing it back up has reminded me how much when i saw it i really wished i could talk to someone yeah. about it i saw another movie based on a true story what's that uh, a prayer before dawn mm. Um, it's about an Australian boxer. Oh, I heard this was great. That goes to th that gets arrested in Thailand and has yeah. to do time in Thailand yeah. and becomes a Thai box man. It is one of the rawest. So apparently the the guy Bobby, I forget his last name, the guy that wrote the original book, um, consulted the story. So he tried to make it as accurate as possible. It's done in Thailand. It has a lot of. Um, 
very authentic stuff mm-hmm. going on. Um, there's also uh, a mixture of like trans actors and stuff like that. He actually falls in love with uh, a trans prisoner. Mm-hmm. It's it's really raw, man. I don't know if I've ever seen anything quite as raw in the prison system outside of the United States. Yeah. Um, and he he's also a heroin act, addict in prison trying to survive as all this insanity is happening and he doesn't speak the language so he's like trying to maneuver in this world that's like very 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 scary Mm -hmm. and there's no like the the, the guards aren't policing it it's just like they just their sole purpose is to transport prisoners from one part of the prison to the other so Mm -hmm. whatever happens when you're in it happens when you're in it and he learns the hard way that like Anything could happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Sometimes on top of you, mm. sometimes around you, and there isn't anything you can really do about it. Uh. It's it's it was a fucking great movie. But I, you know, I love raw stuff. Um. It it might not be necessarily something that everybody can stomach. Mm-hmm. But it's a good fucking. Now I want to read the book, uh, A Prayer Before Dawn. But man, I. <sighs> There are two movies in the last couple weeks that like fucked me up, and that was one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was great. A prayer before dawn. Please see that movie that if you out. can. Yeah. If you if you can if you can handle, because it's not. It, you know how some movies have like a it, turning away when the when the violence is happening, or whenever assaults are happening. This movie doesn't do that. It's it keeps the camera there the whole time. Yeah, and that's something that I don't know if everybody's necessarily used to, but. It's a good one. When you see that in a movie, it's it's obviously such a deliberate choice because oh, yeah. we're so used to it pulling yeah, away definitely. that it can seem kind of sadistic to linger on that stuff, but it, it definitely makes you think about how often a movie gives you the thrill of the violence without having to suffer the right. actual witnessing of it. Um, did you say that you saw the Happy Time Murders yeah. as well? Okay. What did you think of that movie? Happy Time Murders... Fucking it! Oh, so the thing that bothered me about it was that it could it could have been such a good movie. It had the bones, yeah, of a fucking incredible movie. And I'm I gotta be honest, I have I left I left the movie thinking, huh? Mm-hmm. I'd watch it again. Yeah, I would, but it really it goes for something. And succeeds in a lot of ways and fails in a lot of ways. Like it most, doesn't. Know most of it, the jokes in it just completely die to death. Die at my to, screening. I mean, you could. There were a few people that were chuckling, and I laughed. Steve, at it. I mean, every it was intermittent die, chuckles. Like the jokes. Actually, one of the best scenes was a scene where Melissa McCarthy and Maya Rudolph are oh, yeah. are interacting and just searching a house, and it's like it's got nothing to do with puppets or murder or anything, <laughs> yeah. and it's actually kind of a fun scene because you've got two comedic actresses with a, a you know who riffing on things and th- that can like latch onto each other's timing. The issue is that as a as a movie without puppets, it's not funny. So why the fuck would you make it puppets? This movie I feel like has shut down the chances of yes anyone else making. Uh, an, an adult puppet film mm-hmm. for I don't know the foreseeable future. Like I don't know what the what the memory in Hollywood is of that kind of thing. But this movie takes a concept that really could have been a fun little kind of home run in its own way, and just it felt so tired. And I have to say this: I, I'm actually kind of sad to say it because I had heard enough kind of fair to positive reviews of it for people saying it's really not that bad that I started to think, well, maybe the trailers are just poorly yeah. edited. And, nah. But those those were the biggest jokes, yeah. Steve. You've seen the trailer? Oh. Those are the biggest jokes in the movie. Yeah. Wow. The deaths are jarring, too. It's not like the deaths are funny. They're like... Steve, they're like... They're jarring. They're like... <laughs> somebody gets their head blown off and it, and it feels like a person got... <laughs> it doesn't feel like... <laughs> Yeah. But it's like fuck this person who is just talking died wow. right in front of these people. It doesn't feel like it. It's not a light movie, and mm. that's that's kind of what it is. It, it plays with death so and weird. life too much. It's not light, and yet the no. humor is so juvenile <laughs> that only a, a twelve or thirteen year old boy should be finding this that funny. You know. Like the Joel McHale character, the, it plays like an FBI stooge, yeah. and they raz him, and it's the most tired, yeah. poorly written, unfunny razzing yeah. of any character. They actually do the sort of asshole says what kind of joke with him throughout the movie. 
And it's like yeah. it's not funny, and it just makes him seem like what kind of cloistered weirdo is he? Yeah. That you know, to be his age now, he doesn't know he's that, that routine. For this. Yeah, it just what he's like what? Yeah, asshole says what what? Yeah. I'm just kind of, what? Right. He does it like ten times, and it starts to get like. And they keep coming sounds, back to it. it. Sounds horrible. It's it really so is. I mean, I, I hate to say that it really is because I I I, I buy into the idea that it is actually a throwback to almost like a '90s uh, action comedy. But it it's like a bad one. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it was a mess, and it's one of those scripts that was kicking around Hollywood for so many years. Yeah, you and can you tell feel why. the you feel the development uh, troubles. You you know you feel the fact that they've probably recast the human parts in it five times trying to get this thing made. So that's a that's a hold up. Or... Yeah, it's a hold up. Yeah, hold up. But don't blame Melissa McCarthy. Anybody out there? I won't. Yeah, yeah. I won't. Uh, what else? What else did you guys see? I saw. I thought Summer '84 was pretty good. Yeah, I gotta see that. Man. Um, if you like Stranger Things, the if whole you like... kids on bikes thing. Oh you man, know, it's... kids on bikes. <laughs> Which I'm a sucker. <laughs> I'm in. I, I think one of the things I liked about it, I have issues with that with with Summer '84. I, I do like the. I think it's pretty authentic and like what it's showing, and it's a little, it's a little more like rough around the edges and in, in, in both of like the depiction of the characters and like these kids from the eighties and like what's going on in this beautiful little neighborhood, mm -hmm. but also in like kind of how the ending is kind of bleak, which I think is kind of a, a like choice it. and it's yeah. kind of different, which mm -hmm. I kind of enjoy. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so I also saw in theaters still just to be timely. I finally saw crazy rich Asians. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. I really wanted to catch I'm that. Not, uh, I thought that was pretty talked. good. I really liked that. I didn't love it. Yeah. I think I kind of went in after like the hype bubble blew up a little bit in my face. Like mm -hmm. I thought well, I thought it was going to be like the second coming of the rom-com and mm. um and a lot of it does work really well and it's it, it's gorgeous, it's mm -hmm. funny, it's 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 good. It's it's a fun time. The representation piece of it is so huge. It's, yeah. that it's it, massive. The it's fact that it's doing what it's doing and that it's getting the kind of hype that it's getting is, I mean, you know, that's that's like an, it's about time kind of thing. Yeah. Literally, it's like you know every character is represent is 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 Asian American or mm -hmm. Asian. And, you know, it's and it's, it's like really cool. every major minor passing glance. You know everything, and it's it's pretty awesome. Well, the fact that you don't see mainstream American movies like that. Like that's that's pretty embarrassing just for uh, our culture yeah. that yeah, that hasn't yeah. happened. It's special because of that. It's also special because they don't make a lot of rom coms anymore mm -hmm. that are any, yeah, of any good, you know, of, of any level of good. So I mean that that is a solid solid movie that is funny. It is fucking gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Like it is stupid pretty. Mm. Um, so that's a big plus. And I feel like we talked about this a little. And I walked out of it thinking, and this is you know maybe me you know me admitting my being naive in certain things or certain regards, but about a, 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 a culture. But like, I remember talking about this when we walked out of Coco, like about just like learning about yeah. like, uh, you know, the Mexican culture and like the day of the dead and what it means and mm -hmm. all this stuff, you know, and there's, there's like an experience, uh, for me to watch crazy rich Asians and like to learn about that culture, like about what the weddings look like and about the importance of this and the importance of that and what colors mean mm -hmm. when they wear certain dresses. And, it's like it's an experience and like you know to not know that and to be you know in the dark and you know wanting to you know being open to learning more about it like that's a whole different level of experience mm -hmm. if you're that kind of movie goer to like see a culture represented more than it's ever been in a major motion picture and right. be like completely immersed in it and impressed and wanting to learn about it and just like blown away. there there's a wedding scene in the film that is Arguably one of the best wedding scenes I don't think I've ever seen in a movie. Uh -huh. Like it is moving, it is gorgeous, and it just works from start to finish. That's cool. It's really, really incredible. Um, and yeah, I mean, and and everybody in the movie is is really good. Um, I just I didn't love it. Like I, it, it, yeah, certain I things kind of felt a little tropey to me, and like you know, as is the case with most of these rom coms that come right. out that don't have a, like a, a unique angle or like a story beat or something like that. It, it's the you know, rich guy who doesn't want the girl to know he's rich and now she's got to meet his family. And yeah. They're, yeah. they're like royalty in a ways. But definitely good. Good stuff. I'm to understand they're crazy rich. <laughs> they're stupid rich. They're stupid rich. <laughs> um, and just on the topic of Asian American actors, I also saw Searching, mm -hmm. uh, John Cho. I've always loved John Cho. Mm -hmm. And like, 
whether it was between uh, I don't know if you saw Columbus that came out last year that he was in and he is incredible in this and mm. I really like this movie a lot um you know if you've seen unfriended you probably think you've seen this movie you haven't like if the whole taking place on screens mm. thing is um is the whole shtick of the film but it it plays out entirely differently um does it do it better than I, way better because okay. because it's not like it's not stuck on being on one screen mm. right, right you know where you just see like everybody's face <laughs> you know it's literally you it's utilizing what we what we interact with is screens in in many different forms, whether that's on your phone, mm. on your laptop, on a security camera, on a TV, uh, live newscast being broadcast on YouTube. Right. You know, like that that view into your world and into the world around you on various types of sources through a screen. Right, right. This movie does that, oh, cool. which is cool, I think, and um, and the mystery around the film, like the whole mystery that he's trying to figure out. Um, if you don't know the movie, like basically his daughter goes missing and he's trying to figure out where she is through using her computer, using his phone, her, mm -hmm. his computer, what, all these different things. Right, right. Um, but, uh, thought it was super good. Like I was Sounds really good. into it. Um, and it's a movie from a first time filmmaker, um, Anish Shiganti, Shiganti. Um, he like apparently, like he used to work for Google he like did that really popular Google Glass Seeds commercial, oh. a little short film that was like really huge a few years back. Mm -hmm. But this is like his first movie, feature movie. Um, and this isn't Unfriended too, right? This is not. That came out earlier this year okay, called Dark you. Web, which I also didn't hate. But I mean, this is definitely <laughs> better. Um, Deborah Messing's in it. Um, oh. I think that's probably it cast wise, but. I don't know. I just thought it was like really tense the whole way through, and like there's a there's a there's an opening sequence in this movie that really um, what most people would criticize about something like Unfriended, like they did the screen thing, is like you don't care about anybody in that movie. Right. And the same thing really for Unfriended too, and really most mysteries, horrors, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like you don't have any character development or like any kind of care for the character. This movie does an incredible thing in the first like ten minutes, fifteen minutes. There's like a little prologue pretty much to the whole movie that sells this family mm -hmm. and his character and his daughter's character and things that have happened to this family over the course of her childhood that when things happen, you really fucking care. And like, no. you're really on his side and you really want him to figure this out. That's really cool. And it works so well. And I feel like those 10, 15 minutes sustain a movie like this for 70 more minutes or 80 more minutes, which mm -hmm. sounds crazy no, to I say like it. it's on screens for 90 minutes that's going to get old. Like, it doesn't because I feel like you really kind of care about him figuring this out. Yeah. So that movie just came out last week. It's wide. I would highly recommend if you're looking for, like, a tense little thriller, small mm. small budget, you know, kind of a unique way of telling a story. Um, especially if you haven't, like, been burned, if you didn't like Unfriended. I mean, again, I don't hate those movies, but a lot of people that saw it didn't like it. Yeah. Don't, don't, please don't, like, assume you won't like this because it's a different kind of story that's using that technology. All right. But Searching was, I thought it was pretty solid. Cool. Really enjoyed it. And so it's cool to see like two movies in the top two or three box office that are either entirely Asian, American, Asian cast. And, and you know, this is a, a lead role for John Cho, which he doesn't get too many of. And um, it's true. He's fucking good, man. He's so good. Um, so I hope he is able to be in more stuff. Cool. Like as a lead, not like the background character like he usually is. All right. And check it out, and not in not Harold and Kumar. <laughs> Although I would love which, another. which I'm fine with too. I'd love yeah. Another one. yeah. Uh, what else? So, did you manage to see Hereditary? I was saving it because I oh. figured we would. Oh, is that oh okay. we're going to bring it home with that? <laughs> Are we bringing it home? With yeah, Hereditary? I would love round to. this podcast out with a Hereditary conversation. Sure, let's do it. Yeah, I saw it. Not a fan. Don't make that face. <laughs> You're not. Correct. Okay. Yeah. No, no I, I liked it yeah. quite a bit, actually. Um, you there's... hated Meet the Johnsons, right? You, you not hate. I did not like that. You, you like I, I got to be movie. honest with you. Like, I was stoked on seeing that from you talking about yeah. it. It's a weird-ass movie. It's very weird. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something weird. just didn't work. And maybe it was like the performances and that that like, yeah. threw me. And but you guys are talking about the short the film short... made by Ari Oster. Uh, yep, yep. Before he Ronald this. talked about it on a prior episode. Yeah. And I mean, this, that story, the narrative of it is crazy fucking it's i get what yeah. you were getting at 
Mm. But um, it just didn't work for me. But yeah, so I finally saw Hereditary. Um, didn't get to see it when it was in theaters. It's one of the ones I like couldn't wait to check out. So this, this there's so many things going through my head today, thinking mm-hmm. about finally having caught it. Literally the last night I watched it. Okay, cool. Oh, we were, like trying to get so this it's fresh in your mind. Yeah, it's fresh. But there's so many things going through my mind that relate to the film and that just relate to the experience of watching the film. Mm -hmm. Because, like, we always talk about, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, like, we always talk about, like, A24 and their horror movies and their marketing Mm -hmm. and shit like that. And the more I think about it, it's always bothered me. I think it's a problem. And I think it does a disservice to the filmmaker because I genuinely believe this is a guy that's, like, going to be big. Oh, yeah. He's going to do crazy shit like mm-hmm. I feel like because I think he's like a, a true talent but like I just feel like there's something happening when when this happens to a movie like a movie like this that is so beloved by critics they get like a D plus cine score like that's a really it's been on my mind all day like it's, it's a really big discrepancy I didn't realize hereditary score was that bad D plus that's kind of strange yeah it's it's it was, I don't feel like the trailer I feel like I I felt like this one. I thought it translated pretty well. The trailer and the movie were much closer together tonally than, than in so? the past. I don't personally think so. What I was going to say was I think that I missed it enough that I came back around the other side of the door mm-hmm. to see it late enough that like I didn't even remember that stuff, mm-hmm. like how crazy the trailer is and like all of the festival buzz. Like it was the talk of South by Southwest mm-hmm. and like. You know, like, it's the scariest movie since Exodus. All of that hyperbole. Like, well, unless you believe that. I right. mean, you know, like, I just feel like that makes its way into every conversation about the next horror movie that comes mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Where I feel like this time was unique for me because I was able to see this <clears throat> video on demand after the fact. And, like, all of that conversation had passed to the point that we even talked about, like, don't watch anything. Let's not even talk about it. Cause like, I didn't want to get your takes on it yeah. Yeah. to influence me right. in any way, because like, not that I forgot about the movie, but I experienced it in this way because I got to hear all the hype, the A24 marketing machine, mm-hmm. it being one of A24's biggest releases box office wise, but also being one of the lowest, uh, CineScore to That's critical response ratios ever. Um, so this was a unique thing for me. Like, mm-hmm. and I feel like it let me really enjoy just the movie as it was for what it without is. any of the notions of the buzz, the hate, the mm. people being pissed about it or whatever, not what you thought it was. Mm-hmm. And like that whole horror marketing conversation that we always talk about because, you know, it came out what, like four months ago or ish. And I was able to like, I, not that I, again, not that I forgot about it, but it was June, yeah, so it was three months so ago. So three, right? yeah, yeah, it just was like a, it was interesting because I think about things like, you know, The Witch and like, it comes at night more recently and, you know, seeing those movies right at the peak of the buzz when it's about to pop in either direction, mm-hmm. you know, th- those movies experience the same thing where like low cinema scores and great critical reception and, you know, they make their money in the first two weeks. <clears throat> but this was like a really interesting take for me because like, I feel like it benefited the film in my experience watching the movie, because I feel like if I had seen this maybe at that peak of that, of my want to see it, Mm -hmm. it, I may have watched it differently. I thought it had all the goods that the trailer implied that it had. I actually went places I didn't think it would go based on the trailer. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. I don't. But I, but I feel like, the not, way not that we're reviewing the, the trailer here, but I know. No, we, no, no. But, but this discussion but is one we come back to, right? Yeah, like yeah. it's a part of the conversation. Well, that... when the cinema score is what that is, that's a problem because this is a movie that is well made on in every way. You know what I mean? It's yeah. well acted, it's well shot, it's beautifully produced. Everything about it, it should be able to connect with an audience. Yeah. Maybe it's too horror for an indie film audience and still a little too arty for the tra- traditional horror audience. That's but it. I think that it had much more to offer in terms of those images and those shocks than the typical indie horror that we see where they compare it to The Exorcist. I mean, that's just like a routine at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Mm-hmm. And I think they did do a good job in like leaving so much to still be experienced in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I feel like the shocks that they put in the trailer or like those scenes that they put in the trailer and the and the and the pool quotes and like all of this like build yeah. around it, it just it sets an unrealistic expectation, I feel like, for the mainstream horror going movies audiences right. yeah. that are not willing to accept that it's a little too arty. 
to be horror or a little too or whatever that yeah. that, that, that line that you just said because I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I feel like the average person who says, "Yeah, I like horror movies," they they like The Conjuring, they like The Nun. You mm-hmm. know, I feel like, and then when they see a movie that says the scariest movie of all time in the trailer. And, like, there's four scenes that are pretty scary in the trailer, or pretty shocking, at least, in the trailer. I just feel like even if the movie delivers on those scenes and doesn't show you other scenes that are also shocking, it's just a different kind of movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? I never thought... The trailer is great, Mm -hmm. and it does not... I don't think it's selling a different movie. I think it just doesn't set the audience up for the kind of movie... The kind of horror movie that this movie succeeds at being. This goes against everything that I've said up until this point about the type of movie that this is. This may be one of the only horror genre films that I don't think should be seen in a movie theater. I te- the reason being is because it has kind of the the it works in dread. It's it's not like it doesn't have like horror scares the way that a traditional one has. This is like a Yo, check out this fuck up, fucked up movie I saw the other day, and you watch it with a group of people at home at in the dark. I don't know if it would have the same effect in the theater. It just is too. Oh man, I can't disagree more. The the scale I don't think of it, it I don't, the scale of it, the sound, it the, does, the size man. of the image. I don't think that, there's not a single movie that is beautifully made that isn't improved by seeing in the I don't, theater. I don't, I don't, so I don't, so you're, I think you're both right. I yeah. think I don't think that this movie has. I think you're speaking to the technical experience yeah. and yeah. like you know just the, the- theatrical mm-hmm. being able to display the skill and craft. Yeah, this movie does not have true. legs in the theater. But what you're saying is, I agree with also having watched it at home mm-hmm. because in this film the house plays a pretty important role yeah. in the film. And as I'm watching it in my house, I think it it does affect you a mm-hmm. little more because there are certain scares in the movie that have to do with areas of your house. I and can things. see that. And and you are More immediately intimate. not looking at that area in mm-hmm. your house. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you're both. I think you both have strong points. I mean, I I I would lean towards saying I would always have preferred to see it in a theater. Oh yeah, just because oh, like yeah, you know I think it's just a diff. Just you know that's how I feel like you know they probably would have intended to see it right. to appreciate like how much work went into it. But having watched it the first time at my house in the dark on my couch with my wife. Not looking in the corners of the room, you know, it, it, it because it immediately affects you. Yeah, so I watch I, the theater, I walk out of the theater, and I'd go home, and I'd be like, uh, kind of freaked out. And people yeah. were freaking out when I saw this movie, though. I wouldn't have traded that for the world. The that people, that's, and, and that that's scene, good. that scene that's later, awesome. there's there's a scene where there's something in the shadows that takes your eye a minute to see it, mm. and man, it was fantastic listening it's to me the, cold chills, like the yeah. delayed reaction it. of like people over here seeing it, yeah. and then people over here going, wait, what is something? They're reacting to something. What are they seeing? They must be seeing yeah. something. Oh my god, that's what it is. And you yeah. know, hearing all that. But but I mean, I do know what you're saying about the horror movie at home experience of it's a little weird then if you pause it and like go get some water or yes. go let the dog out or something because you're basically in this sort of scenario. Yeah. Why is it so hard to properly market this type of movie? Like how would you sell this movie? These films um require like patience and they um are just a more slow burn and they, they push two hours and 10 minutes Yeah, for a horror film, you know, like that, that, and that's like the main, when you, when you try to market like a movie like this, it's like, I, I can acknowledge like the challenge because you want as many eyes to see it as possible. Cause even if you have more eyes to see it, you know, like even if a lot of them don't like it, like mm-hmm. it's still more eyes watching this, this movie right? financially. But yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think that that's the common thread with all of them. I think that either equate to the the, the the horror marketing conversation and keeps pulling us back to this and keeps seeing like these really low cine scores, like it comes at night had a really low one as well, as did The Witch. And I think it's because the trailers are cut so quick. Oh they're, yeah. They're, they got the jumps, they got the scares, they're there's more the the music is moody, it's quicker or whatever. It just it's it just gives you this immediate reaction, and mm-hmm. you want more of that in the movie, or, or or that audience wants more of that in the movie. You know what's ironic about that is that that audience that sees that trailer and then is disappointed, and again, I think what we're it's interesting how the trailer is really almost the problem here, but like it, that it audience is. member it is is going to see, is partially drawn to see a movie like The Witch or Hereditary because it does look you know like they are responding to the artiness of it. Yeah. Maybe they don't know that they are. Can I ask you guys a question related to this? So I've noticed something about all these movies. A twenty four 
deals in a horror film that deals with more dread than jump scares, right? So how do you market a movie that does not have jump scares and market it as horror and still convey that it's scary because because still it convey is. what it is yeah. because what it is is these are situational things that make it scary so like which if i would have known it was like dread like the dread scare which, which is more like a mood it's like mm-hmm. situationally i would hate for a fucking goat to like stand <laughs> up what you know it's like things like that are fucking scary but if you talk to anybody that's used to the 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 conjureverse they're gonna be like that's not fucking scary it is though it is a it is a dread it is a dread more than jump scares so how do you market that i don't know i i I don't know uh, i i i think you maybe adjust like leaning too heavily on uh it having jump scares yeah. You know what I mean? Like I feel Selling like Selling it I, like that? I, I, yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think like if you maybe there's a I don't know. Cuz A24 I, I, likes those types of movies. I man. don't have the answer. Clearly I, they do because they do. We, we've it's mentioned hard them to say, like in relation to this this yeah. this issue this they keep coming up. The problem is is that this is my take. The problem is is not that these aren't good films cuz I, I did like The Witch and mm-hmm. I, I yeah. I've actually liked most of the movies that we've talked about in this conversation. But I think the problem is in terms of how it relates to an audience is that these movies don't have stereotypical horror villains in them. Yes. So, like, you're referring to, like, these dread things, yeah, or, like, yeah. these atmospheric mood Atmosphere, things. situational that, things. And most cases are things you can't even see. Right. You know, so you're either in on that, like, or you're waiting for something to come out and be scary. Mm-hmm. And whether that's somebody in the corner of a room or if it's a true villain, like a, a, a Pennywise or, or a nun or whatever, I think that people, the, the mainstream audience that is giving you their money on an opening weekend is conditioned to waiting or wanting to see what that real scary yes. villain is. Yes. And, and all these movies, like, there really isn't. You know, there isn't that. Th- there, that payoff is not there no. in these movies. Another kind is that some would argue is even scarier, mm-hmm. but I don't think that that moviegoer that is giving this a D plus is looking for that. Um, well, I mean, so I, how do you sell that? How do you? How do you? I don't know. How the fuck do you sell that? I don't know. Because we know we know that the, you know, we know that these movies are good at creating an environment and then adding to it and then mm-hmm. twisting it and then that is horror to me. Right. That is that is almost like. Theater of the mind versus watching a TV show. It's like the difference. Like you're required to be in, more in your head about these movies than to see it kind mm-hmm. of unfolding in a very like telegraphing the scares. Like in Hereditary, think about the family unit and how corrupted this family is to its core, and how deep that goes, and how they should be finding strength in each other, but they're actually isolated from each other. You know, someone who wants to see the nun strangle somebody is not going to go <laughs> for not, that. No, for that at all. and there's no way to convey what that movie is going to be. We do think now about, wait, is this? Are they actually selling me the movie that exists? You know, and I don't think that most people necessarily feel like they should have to do that work. You know, trailers have gotten us in this bind of, yeah. of because you know, for a twenty four, that's that's a, a, a movie that's made eighty million dollars, Hereditary. How much yeah. does the, does the cinema score matter to them at this point? I'm sure it does in the long run, but they're not trying to turn Hereditary into a franchise, so it doesn't right, yeah. really matter as much as it would with, say, you know, The Nun. Where if The Nun was if The Nun had a D plus cinema score, that would be an injury to the controversy. Sure. You know? yeah. To some people, just just the fact that you would have to explain something for longer than thirty seconds yeah. is too much. Yeah. Yeah. The fact, if, even if even if the trailer effectively told the story and made you interested, if some if if I said Steve, what her, what's hereditary about? And you go, well, it's about this. Nope, no, what? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. Is it a slasher movie? That's the horror I know, and 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 some of it is like maybe I kind of love this that you kind of love like we do all do kind of the artsy. Horror. Mm-hmm. That's a art. That's a genre. The artsy horror. The 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 witches, the hereditaries are kind of in the artsy area. That I feel like the casual. It's kind of the way that I feel about 
five hundred days of summer. Like, it, sure, it is. It is. It is a. It has something that's a little too artsy for me to show somebody the same way that I would show them. Like, can't hardly wait. You know what I mean? Like, I love those two movies. I'm just you saying, man. Going over to your house. I'm just saying, like tonight we're either watching Five Hundred Days of Summer or Can't it, Hardly Wait. It just the difference. It's the difference in the way that these movies are told, these stories are told. That I cannot. My friends are some of my friends are simple about that sort of thing. God, it's interesting because it's like it's so hard to talk about this without sounding like oh man we're being smug or elitist nah. about it. But it's really about say how much thought. Say. Well, no, because I'm the can't hardly wait guy in that case. And no, but <laughs> well, no, but in that case that was. But I mean, but it, it is really. But, but no, like obviously that. we it's, love the big entertainments too. But what I'm saying is like it's hard to pick. Like, is it that that person does not want to put that much thought into it? Yes. Yeah. Whereas we, That's feel, what it is, we man. feel comfortable. In fact, we're a little insulted if we if we do put that much thought into it and there's nothing there. You know, yeah. it's a different vibe. It's not like oh, we're doing it right and they're doing it wrong. But it is interesting that in order to in order to get eighty million out of this artsy yeah. horror film or this very artistic horror film, they had to sell it like it was a thrill a minute roller coaster. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? We've been around each other so long that I think that our tastes are kind of merging in a way. Like, not completely, but there are things about things we like. We have, like, sympathetic tastes. Like, I have things that I used to watch and go, oh, Ronald would like this. That now it's like my opinion has morphed into, like, I can see why Ronald likes this, too. I like this. Yeah, totally. It turned from, like, me just belting out indie movies to, like, sometimes you'll say something like... Steve is coming to the dark side. I fucking love that man, yeah. and I, same way with me. I think I think yeah, I think it's kind of. I don't of, know. It's 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 a it's a challenge. I don't. No, I get it. But the trailers are shitty, and they don't match the movies. Well, I mean, the trailers I think are good. Yeah, oh, yeah. The trailers are good to tell the. It's st- just like like you you know the question you're posing is like how do you how do you <sighs> effectively sell your movie as like the movie you want it to market it as yeah but also because i guess ultimately what i'm getting at is that like that ultimately hurts the movie it like does. when it's like being sold as like the scare a minute yeah. horror movie that's that, that it's not mm-hmm. um and like again this is a unique situation where like you know in some of those other situ- some of those other examples like most of the scary parts are in the trailer yeah. of these more artsy indie yeah. you know indie horror films this is not the case with Hereditary. I think they did a great job of not showing that stuff. And, like, there are genuine, you know, moments in the movie that are, are great, you know, like mm-hmm. shock moments and yeah. scary moments and things like that. It's just not the same kind of scary moment that I think that most horror audiences are, mm. are being trained to uh, react to. So, I guess ultimately, I guess what, I'm like a broken record. I feel like my whole point was to say, like, <laughs> this, is, this is an example of a movie, though, where I feel like, it bums me out that it's that it's hurting the movie. Yeah. It's hurting the the actual product that people would would be giving their money over their twelve dollars to go see a movie that they would then say, "I give this movie a D." Yeah. Not because like it's a shit movie because there are movies out there that get the D that are shit movies. Right. And that's really just a shit movie. Maybe it's a low. Uh, <laughs> there's not much to see this weekend, but this is what's mm-hmm. available. This is an example where I can think of more recently where I feel like, and, you know, and It Follows is probably the one for me out of all of them I, I like the most mm-hmm. that kind of gets mentioned in the conversation. But like, this is another, this this gets in that point now with that film for me is that where I really like this movie a lot. And I think that, you know, the wrong person going in to watch this film based off of being sold by the trailer, it, it, it hurts, the, it hurts me for the filmmaker, for yeah. the, for the amazing performances from the the cast and the crew and just how great this movie looks in so many ways Mm -hmm. that somebody would experience it in a way that they walk out and say, that's a D plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, and it's, it's based off what they wanted to see and what you wanted to see, unfortunately is like not the movie that you bought a ticket for. Yeah. You just assume that because they did a really good job of marketing it to you. Yeah. And that seems to happen a lot for horror movies. And some of it's just the pull quotes for me. Yeah. Like some of it is just the scares are not accurate to the kind of tone the movie has. Mm-hmm. But I think that some of the pull quotes are what get me the most, not just the fact that all the scares oh, yeah. are in the trailer. I think just that language of saying the scariest thing ever. Yeah. Like don't show anything else. Have one quick shot, mm-hmm. the scariest movie ever. 
And people will go in and be like, this is going to be the best horror movie ever. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be better than uh, The Conjuring. You know, yeah. or whatever their yes. favorite horror film is. Yeah. And it's such a wide range Better now, than Ghoulies. Right. Yeah. That of, of what horror movies can be now, like you're saying. Yeah. That like, you're just hoping that it goes down the middle. And by the middle, I mean the nun. You know, like the jump scare mm-hmm. movies yeah. that, are, that are 90 to 100 minutes long. Not the movies that are 130 minutes long that have like sound design that have like this real low level frequency heartbeat going through the film. And you're like, do you hear that? Yeah. Like, it, and you pick up on that in this movie and it's, it's, it's a choice and it's like, you appreciate it and you know why it matters as you watch the movie. Yeah. But that's, that's not down the middle. Yeah. Like that's yeah. not what people are looking for. I think when, I, I think this movie will have amazing. I know God saying this just, blah. this movie will have incredible life on something like Netflix because it it'll be something that you you watch one movie like The Nun and it's like hereditary and somebody comes up to you and say hey fuck everything you're doing watch hereditary right now and i think this is a movie that will live in that space and i think it needs to i think that the movie thing while it's a cool thing that people you know things should thrive in the theater this movie needs a place like Netflix because it can circulate a little better it can kind of just have a, a scary screenshot, a description. And you kind of lean into it, and it'll it'll spread because people are like, "Oh man, I I didn't expect this movie sure. to be what it was." Yeah, and it wound up and that word of mouth, world up. you know, maybe that is a more accurate totally system of, agree with of, you. of it like has to be spreading it, the word it, it about the movie be, because man. at this point it should just be a thing that you don't do if you're putting together your trailer for your horror film yeah. find someone who used a different example than the exorcist <laughs> because that saying the scariest movie point. since the exorcist yeah. it's like it, that that's like one of my biggest pet peeves when we have this conversation is like that's the guy who says that first is like i hope they pull my quote yeah, yeah. whatever website says that it's like Kick him in the dick. They, they just say it, you know, because they want the quote in the in the ads, and I mean, and they pull it. But I really was happy, actually, like in hindsight, that I didn't get to see it. Me I, too. I would have mm-hmm. liked to see it in theaters, yeah. for what we talked about earlier. But I think it benefited my experience with the movie, and like just the movie's place in my eye now, and in my opinion of the, you know, where it sits in horror films and things like that. To have come to it later, where like I wasn't thinking about that stuff that really separate bothers from, me. Yeah, from that I was cycle able to of separ- exactly. people processing same. it and you having to have an opinion right yep. away and all yep. that stuff. Yeah, yep. I feel I the same way. I'm and glad I, mean, I, I'm glad I saw it the way that I did. Yeah, it fucking I mean, blew my mind. I I, I want to see it again. Um, to say whether I like how strongly I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I did really like it, and there's like so many things to process and look at and think about, mm-hmm. and um, which also kind of becomes goes back to our point about it could be too much for like you know the average horror yes person um and again not to like talk down to that because i'm all about those movies too yeah Yeah. i enjoy them too um but there's just a lot going on in this movie man it's just like they're tony collette is like full beast mode like she's incredible Mm -hmm. really everybody um what's his uh alex wolf alex wolf who plays the son peter (sighs) man he was so good he was his, that, his, the that, daughter was really good. I, I yeah, everybody. God, everybody his, so the, the dinner sequence I was thinking about, like oh yeah, when him, when he and her get into it, yeah, this like complete failure yeah. to communicate, like man, their, their feelings in any in any kind of like and just their constructive faces. way, yeah. and like that that ability to get that welled up tear right mm-hmm. on the edge edge of your eyelid, but yeah. n- and not to come down your face. Mm-hmm. He he has that like mastered. Well, the yeah. vulnerability of that character is just such a huge aspect yeah. of the movie yeah. that you just feel like, okay, here's someone who bad things could happen to and he's not protected in any way. Yeah. yeah. And he's not even doing much to protect himself, you know? And yeah. the, as the movie went on, it was just, uh, uh, it, the, the possibilities are so unpleasant. And then some of the things that actually happen are, are very unpleasant too. Uh, and Dowd's kind of a secret hero, I guess, if we're thinking of American yeah. animals in this, like she's, she's so good. In both movies. And, and I finally watched The Handmaid's Tale, too, and she's great in that, too. Mm, I she's, need to she's, see The Handmaid's Tale. She is like Tale. a secret weapon. Yeah. It made me feel crazy that every, they showed me everything, and still, I didn't mm-hmm. know what the fuck was going to happen at the end. Well, it showed me everything. That, it showed that, us everything. Yeah, that that's something I think that is like that helps and hurts it. 
Yeah. Only because, yeah. like, I feel like it's really disarming to actually see the things yeah, yeah. that you, you either thought were, like, happening in another scene or, like, off camera or, or because of blocking, you weren't seeing it. Yeah. But, like, this movie kind of shows it. Everything. And, like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. But I think it's also kind of, like, can be a problem with some people because it kind of complicates your understanding of what what is actually happening. Yeah. You know, it it, it, it could, like, uh, give you some, like, oh, that that, that happened. But it's mm-hmm. like, but what, is that, what does that mean? And, like, yeah. did that have anything to do with what happened, like, next or, like, I don't know. There's like it, the movie is really, really pretty deep, and like there's is, so man. much like symbolism and foreshadowing that you you like think back to after. At least for m- me, my experience, like I think back to like, oh fuck, like that mm-hmm. that really kind of dictated this happening, and like I didn't even think about it at the time. Yeah. They felt like my family too. After a while, I was like, is it? I hope These not. feel like my no, no, no. <laughs> I sure but like, 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 I was at I was attached to the characters. Yeah. I'm like these these could be my cousins. My you right. know, I was so worried for them. The movie just is like it just there's just you said earlier there's this isolation like mm-hmm. among the family, yeah, and um, among the kids and like their place with, you know her knowing of her mother's life and like even physically where they live it, it's so isolated you know this house in the i guess it's the north the pacific north or wherever it happens mm-hmm. it just there's so much isolation happening everywhere in this movie yeah. which makes it you know more vulnerable and scarier and yeah i don't know I, I i look forward to watching it again it was definitely way better than I thought it was going to be based off of the like negative backlash same. from audiences. Same, same, same. So that was good for me, and I, I, I did really like this movie. And I would say anybody that hasn't seen it, maybe on the fence about seeing it, as long as your open mind is 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 available to you, <laughs> and you and you can deal with like a horror movie being a little more, not even I wouldn't say challenging, just being a different kind of horror movie. You know, go in knowing that, yeah, yeah. not thinking that it's going to be. The next movie in the Conjuring verse, like because it's 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 a different it's a different experience, which can be very rewarding, and I felt like it was mm. because it does feel it does feel like a different kind of scare, a different kind of uh, disturbing moments and things like that. Right, right. But cool. yeah, I I I enjoyed it. See this? I shit. really liked it. Yeah, it's got a really tangled storyline like what you're talking about the way that just how long this has been going on and what the actual plan that's in motion is and everything and it really does make you realize that these characters were doomed long before you you saw them you know and it's it's what it's setting up and this idea of of like you know what the what the what the plan is let's say is so it's so outside of what was going on with the family, but it's also yeah. completely intertwined with the family, and that's so. That to me, that's what makes it good horror is that there is that psychological side of it, right? But there's also a very, very tangible side of what's going on in the story. It's not just internal scares. It's also about, you know, an actual group of people that are do- <laughs> doing horrible things. It's weird things. because, like, I feel like the movie succeeds in a lot of ways of showing like some of the traditional horror imagery mm-hmm. that like you'd want to see yeah. but then I feel like it also kind of like pushes uh, some audience members like comfort level about what they're watching yes. in, mm-hmm. in a movie yeah and you mentioned Tony Collette but it's it's worth saying again and loudly just what a yeah, what, I saw you screaming it from your yeah, social media yeah <laughs> well what day. just what she can do is so amazing like she's she just has this like she can put you right there in the feelings of the character that she's playing, and in a movie like this, where what she's doing is so, like this isn't a character that you really can get get inside the mind of very easily and understand what she's going through very easily. So when you're finally understanding what's going on, she's just like a, uh, I don't know, a tormented person. Such an unpredictable performance too. Yeah. yeah. Like there's a moment where she like screams at her son that I thought she was screaming at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like just her face and like her, I could, I feel like I could see her like skin shaking. Mm-hmm. She was so angry, and I was like, you know, yeah, felt it. Like no, those shifts oh, that can almost be too intense in like a regular dramatic yeah. structure. Yeah. But in a horror movie, it's like it's part of the horror is that emotional shift of someone that you thought you were safe with. This seems like one of those movies where, like, somebody died on set. It's just so scary. <laughs> yeah, there's some lore yeah, around the it. movie's yes. cursed. Yeah. It's like somebody got set on fire. While they... I'm like, what is this movie? Anyway, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Good stuff. Yeah. 
Hereditary. I'm glad that you thought I hated it, though. I was. Well, no, for a I split second, your we face. You it. saw the face too, didn't you, Ronald? Yeah. I was born with this face, John. Yeah. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> it's that. That Steve. I don't really like that movie at all. Just like. Well, Ugh. I was just trying to not show my cards. <laughs> yeah, you did early. a good job, man. Because I mean, we kind of stopped talking about it. We, yeah. We all agreed to stop talking about it. Yeah. I don't want to feel like I'm part of setting you up yeah. to not like the movie, you sure, know. Sure. So if I say it's fantastic, I'm thinking like if they don't think it's fantastic, <laughs> then me saying that made it seem slightly less so, you and know. And there there are some movies though where I feel like our read is like I'm be like pretty confident in it. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're like you know like if they're asking me and they're not going to see it for the week, it's like I'm pretty fucking confident. Yeah. That like they're gonna love this movie. Yeah, every now and then. Yeah, you you just, I don't know. There's certain films that come across like you're talking and you were saying like some of our tastes have like kind of intermingled and like yes. like it wasn't like there, that there, before. there, there are and some where I, I don't know I th- this is one though where it was smart to like be like let's yeah. just reserve it and like we'll chat later well you see now there's so many sort of plot surprises yeah. so to speak yeah. that you wouldn't want to know too much about the movie anyway so yeah having your friend even, you know you, we would try to be subtle we would still say something that would spoil so yeah it's good that it's good that you waited or that we waited to have this conversation but yeah so if you waited to see Hereditary... Yes, if you just saw it on home video... We don't mean to do the hype train. Yeah. yeah. We would say, like I said before, just be open-minded if you want a, a pretty solid solid horror film. Yeah. More than just solid, honestly, in our opinion. But The hype train has come through town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're like somewhere down the road, you know, those little carts where you got one guy on one side, another guy on the other, <laughs> and you're just pushing. Yeah. 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 That's us. Uh, uh, what, do, what do you call that? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I saw it in a million cartoons. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah, the only place that I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, um, I think that's it, man. I think right. so, that's too. a lot of movies, man. There's yeah, so there's many, the so show. many. That was a big old catch up. A big, oh, old, yeah. big old, it's big old, big <laughs> old. Hey, that catch up was big old, <laughs> <laughs> big old catch up. That's what we should call it. The big old catch up. <laughs> big old catch up. <laughs> big old catch up. <laughs> um, you can find us on movieshmovie dot com, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Um, your 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 podcast provider of choice mm. as we always say it's got to be super simple i'd imagine for somebody to leave a rating on a podcast i don't yes. know i'm just guessing i'm guessing it's one of the easiest i mean things i in feel the world. like i've done it multiple times and it it's took so me easy. two seconds to do maybe maybe if you're listening and you like us steve we must have some kind of elite account with itunes or something or really really fast reflexes because yeah. i when i did that when i reviewed a show yeah. on itunes and left a five-star rating yeah it was so easy that i was like I wish it was as easy for the people that listen to movies yeah. Yeah. as it was I've, for me I've, just I've now. Shared that thought but then myself. I remembered my reflexes and I remembered my elite access to all things media. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I was just complaining about <laughs> having to wait for Movie Pass and then giving up and paying full price. But you know, so I think that uh, I think we have to be understanding that mm-hmm. they just don't have access to the sort of uh, speeds that. that we do. But, I get that. Uh, it, you feel bad for him, don't you, Ronald? I do, man. Imagine listening to this show and not being able to leave a review like quickly and easily. Yeah, man. Well, if you're up for the challenge, we would love a review, yeah, a rating of any kind. If you could, if you could leave one, that'd be great. I don't know what we're at currently, but I would love to be able to double it. Yeah, oh, by man. the end of October. Tell a friend. Tell a friend, please. And by double it, I mean go from one to two. So just one person, please. Oh yeah, <laughs> just leave a review, please. Um. It would mean a ton. It's just, you know, it's, it's something I always think about because I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. We all do. And it's like every podcast, or most of them, they mention that. Yeah. The ones that need help. Yes. You know, that need the word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can kind of see. And I sometimes help these people out, Steve. Yeah. And I see how many reviews they have and I'm like, these guys don't need help. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> and and that makes me feel horrible about can, ours. Can Movish <laughs> Movie get some? Right. You mind sharing? Just break off a your piece. thousands of reviews yeah, with seriously. ours? But yeah, I mean, I you know, if you if anybody listened to this, if you you're a first time listening or if you've listened 222 times plus then mm-hmm. uh, more than that actually. Um if you haven't already, even if it's just a, a star rating, like it helps a lot when Please. people search for podcasts about what we talk about on this podcast to maybe get them to, you know, to see our name in the next time they search for something, it it would be appreciated. Mm. If you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, or anything that we talked about today, you can email us, movieshmovie at gmail.com, or you can comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash movieshmovie. Mm-hmm. We, we would love to, to see any feedback on there. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what the next episode is going to be about, but I'm sure John will have something fun to come up with. Mm-hmm. It'll be a nice little surprise. I'm excited. To you and us. Right. Well, that's what I mean, Ronald and I. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And uh, well, I guess we'll talk to you then. As always, you've made our day. Thanks. Bye.